Well, how awesome one that we're that we're doing this. And my understanding is we get to do this again, but to be able to kick it off in Tulsa is really fun. I mean, obviously being able to come here. Uh, there's a line outside, you know, as we start to come in and uh, it's pretty awesome just for our state and for our sport and obviously for the University of Oklahoma. Uh, what's this off season been like uh, for you? Your first yeah. time to really settle in uh, a, a little bit after the season. Well, there's so obviously the landscape of college athletics is slightly changing, or at least it feels that way with the transfer portal with NIL. Um, but I've been really thrilled with the response of our team and what we've been able to do. And we've been able to get back on the court. We've worked out for about four weeks. Um, the response from our team has been phenomenal, and we've just continued to really focus on enhancing our culture, working hard, and getting better. And that's all we can do. You touched on a little bit there, but. Mm -hmm. How much different is it now versus a few years ago as far as like having to almost recruit your own players again you know, yearly? I know, right. you know obviously it's all fairly stable, but that going through that process and mm -hmm. having to make sure that you know, you know who's going to stick around and things like that. Well, I mean, I think it's a little different because I don't, I don't want to recruit our players to stay. I want to actually get to know our players, build relationships, and really maximize what we can do here. And I think there, there's a difference in, in the intent behind it. And that's the only thing that we can control is, is the culture that we really want to have, right? And that's it. And that's the only thing that can keep them. There's no, there's no paperwork. There's no, I can't sign off on anything to keep them from going anywhere. Uh, so I actually really want to get to know them because when you really get to know somebody, you also get to coach them better. And then your, your culture, I mean, our whole culture is based on, on loving what we do, loving how we do it, and loving who we get to do it with. And so that's not because of the portal, and that's not just to keep players. That's really to be able to build something really special here. So we are in a little different position than maybe men's basketball is or maybe where football is from, from, those, from, the, from a national standard. I'm not talking about Oklahoma. I'm talking national standard. Um, and quite honestly, I don't really want to get there. You know, I don't. And but I do know that that's reality. And so there are some other things we've got to be able to do. But the number one thing is just continuing to enhance the culture that we have, and for our fan base to fall in love with the team. You know, and to grow with the team. And that's what we want to be able to do. Jenny, when we look at your roster, can you give us an update on Anna and just her yeah. timeline of uh, recovery? Yeah, she looks great right now. Anna looks absolutely great. And. Uh, we, we don't have a date yet, but she's ahead of schedule. So we will have, we will be competing in a foreign tour in August. Uh, I have no idea if she'll be able to play, but I know she'll be able to do some elements of practice. She's stepping in, she's able to do some workouts. She's running, she's jumping. Uh, I think she's even craving running, so that's always positive. Uh, but no, she looks great, and you can tell she's really progressing great. What about the challenge to those returners? They taste the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. They know expectations. There's going to be a lot of expectations entering. What, what's your challenge to them entering the offseason, getting ready for the foreign tour and past that? Well, and what a fun season last year for us to be able to just kind of get out there and go and then really try to manage some of the expectation. And I know there was a bit of a roller coaster, but it's also what a fun experience and a lot of learning lessons in one year. And so at the end of the season, we all know that we didn't end how we wanted to end, but we do know that we're pretty motivated. And those, you know, some of those, some of those moments in that season, whether they were really good moments or maybe not so good, have been nipping at our heels in this off season to really get better. And so I think from a senior leadership standpoint, you know, we're lucky enough to still have Maddie Williams back, Taylor Robertson back, Ana Yunus that you've mentioned. So to be able to have them come back and choose to come back, especially in this landscape, is huge. And to be as motivated as they are um, and to lead as well as they are, there's really good things going to happen in this program next year. What are some of the challenges or obstacles you face as a women's basketball coach with NIL for Coach Gasso or for Coach Venables and a couple other people? I think there's some challenge just in how we want to manage it and how we want to look at it. And I and I understand, you know, we don't want to get to these these big numbers that we can't manage, but we do want to be able to provide some opportunity for young people that maybe there haven't there haven't been those opportunities. You know, I look at some of the women on our team that, you know, have small business aspirations and so for them to be able to start that at an early age, they still have to do the work. They just get to be connected at an earlier age and they're not necessarily, I don't like to use the word handcuffed, but they're not handcuffed by some things. And so 
I'm looking at it from a very positive view too, because it can provide our student athletes some opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have had. That's the intent behind it. They can provide them some opportunities to get some mentorship that maybe they wouldn't have been able to have due to NCAA compliance rules. So there are some things that aren't pretty, you know, and again, we really want to focus on our culture and that's the number one thing. But there are some incredible opportunities as well that we can start to really navigate through. And that's where I'm hoping it kind of evolves to instead of exactly what we're seeing right now. Jenny, you talk about uh, opportunities that you know previous players didn't have. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the 50th anniversary of Title IX mm -hmm. is uh, you know, here uh, is, is coming out in a great way. Do you, when did you first become aware of that? What do you, what do you feel like the, the biggest impacts of that has been? And also just OU's piece in uh, women's athletics uh, period with all the success. That this program is well, I think from just a pure Title IX perspective, I think you can see that that uh, it's definitely evolved over time. I mean, you know, I still consider myself fairly young, but you know, when I when I when I grew up, I I played with the boys because there weren't the opportunities. Now there's opportunities for my daughters, so I think that there's um, there's incredible opportunity that's continuing to grow. Um, there was a really wide gap, you know, even in college in terms of what we were doing compared to what the men were doing. Um, and we didn't even think about talking about it, right? And then now I think there's a lot of things, especially in the last few years, you know, obviously through social media and, you know, there's varying opinions. However, um, I think our women are getting some incredible opportunities and we need to continue to do that. Look at the sport dynamic here at Oklahoma. I mean, look at our women's softball, look at gymnastics. I mean, you're talking, national you know national championship contenders national champions and and these women that are spokesmen spokeswomen and i think that's huge i mean obviously we want football to do really well we want men's basketball to do really well and i think that's actually what separates us is that we don't see that one program that's successful hurts another we see that there's abundance for all um, and we're going to continue to grow we're going to continue to do the best we can for this community be part of this community um, but we have some incredible examples around us.